What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Rooster Retro Show. My name is Rue, and you're watching Chrono Trigger. Part 15 and uh, chapter something still, I can't remember, but I think we're at the end of Break the Seal. Uh, in the last episode, we went on a bit of a fetch quest and went around uh, through multiple time periods to get all those black treasure boxes that we've been seeing throughout the entirety of the game. Uh, I probably didn't get all of them. I think I'm going to loot back around and probably try to get some. Probably not today, but uh, in a future episode. Today we're going to go through uh, the Terra Cave, which is actually the um, Earthbound Village, or Al Getty, as they call it here in the game. And uh, these are the inhabitants that uh, do not have magic. So they were cast out from Zeal, or never were allowed into Zeal. They're basically treated as scum. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to do a little bit of selling. Let me get rid of some junk here that I don't need, because I've got a lot, it looks like I've got a lot of weapons here that that I don't really need anymore, and probably a couple doubles of some of them too. So I'll probably go ahead and get rid of these. Uh, I don't really need these gold suits anymore, all this is just garbage at this point. <laughs> uh, I don't think I want to get rid of, like, everything, I don't know, I have a kind of a, a thing about keeping my initial equipment. <laughs> I always have, oh, that meso mail, I need to put that on some people. Yeah. Okay, we'll also get some upgrades here, too. That demon edge is going to be nice. Let's see. We got a lumen robe. Worse for Marley, but better for Luca. Flash mail. That's good. Glow helms. Those are good for the boys. These lumen robes. You get one for now. These glow helms. Can I afford? I'll just get one. I'll just get one. All right, let's put that demon edge on. That's a nice upgrade there. And I think that's the sword that we could have gotten way back in Medina Village <laughs> way early for like a whole lot of money uh, but yeah this is when you're actually supposed to get it so imagine if you got that sword then how beefy Krana would be oh my god that would be uh, would have been awesome if you had like what 65,000 gold <laughs> which uh, without a whole hell of a lot of grinding is uh, difficult to do Queen put the mammoth machine in the ocean palace to absorb Lavis's power she locked the guru of life up on the mountain of woe Guru of Life said that Sir Janus has much stronger powers than Shala. Huh. They think, they think Janus is using the, the queen. Yeah, really. Yeah, that kid's really, uh, really gives a crap about his magical abilities. But that is kind of interesting to note that, uh, it's been said in the game here that Janus is more powerful than Shala. Let's remember that for later. Take out a pen and write that shit down. <laughs> Spend the night? Yes! Free in. Here we go. That's, that's perfect. It's too bad we didn't have access to this earlier. Not that it mattered, because Zeal has a, uh, a healing square in some of its areas. There we go. Long ago, the Enlightened Ones and the Earthbound Ones lived as one. I see. So it must have been through the power of Lavis that the Enlightened Ones, quote-unquote, were able to, well, raise a freaking city into the sky. <laughs> this hole leads to the beast nest. Through this nest, you'll reach some... To reach the chain or whatever it is to the mountain of woe essentially I, didn't, I go too fast sometimes i go a little bit too fast <laughs> for the uh for me to read and I, I i try to think about that when i'm playing it through i'm like oh let's go so oh look a little a little sparkly let's get that got a power tab nice put that on right away and uh if you notice if you do it fast enough and go into your menu the, the music doesn't have a chance to start up again <laughs> there's a couple little musical glitches in this game actually uh literally maybe a couple some one this is one and uh well, there's another one that involves the Epoch, but uh, I'll do that maybe later. If not, I'll at least uh, explain about it when the time comes. All right, what do we got? Oh, okay, so this is the Terra Cave or the Beast's Nest. I didn't know what to call it on my sidebar because uh, they do refer to this area as the Beast's Nest. But when you come into this place altogether, it's the Terra Cave. So I just went with that. I just kept it that way. That's fine. This is going to be a pretty long episode today. Um... Just because there's a lot of ground to cover, and I figured I wanted to get most of this episode, or most of this, most of this quest here in one episode. Uh, so I decided to just go ahead and let it let it roll with a longer, a little bit longer. So that's cool. Uh, and, and this is typically the length that I like my main LPs to be, anyways. Is a little closer to an hour. Side LPs I like to keep down on the shorter side, just because they're something quicker and easier to do for me during the week. <laughs> Even though I've changed my uh, uploading schedules to uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, and uh, apparently, you know, I, it's obvious, I missed my Friday release date on 
this game, so it will be coming out tonight, which is a Sunday. But if you're watching it in the future, that doesn't matter. <laughs> so yeah, I'm talking about this for no reason. All right, these beasts here. Uh, I should probably talk about the enemies in this area. They're tough. Some of the toughest ones we fought thus far. Uh, by by a pretty good clip. They're uh they're tough and uh. Physical attacks seem to do the job pretty good, but yeah, there we go. They uh, they hit kind of hard, so Chrono is almost, I don't know, is almost down. Have to take a quick healing round. Or uh, item healing round here. Oh yeah. So, yeah, that, that was a little close, but uh, that's okay because Marley has, we got Marley in the party. I'm gonna roll with my uh, OG party today for a little while. Because most of this is, uh, there's a, there's a good bit of story today. So. More of these guys. They are, uh, like I said, just a bit tanky. You know, they got a lot of hit points. Chrono's spin cut, since it does double the damage, seems to be a good option here. Let's see how Marley does on the ice. Also chuck a little bit of fire there as well. Doesn't seem like they have... Oh, it ups their attack power. Okay, that's something I didn't notice in the first battle. Sorry about that. Um... It looks like magic increases their intact power, which is <laughs> not good, but I'm glad they're hitting Chrono anyway, it's just because he's got the most hit points, and uh, that's who I want them to hit. I, you know, I do kind of wish that this game had had Rose, like like Final Fantasy games did, or uh, maybe even similar to have Breath of Fire handled it, but I can understand why they couldn't do it, because, you know, unless you're moving your battles, like, off the map screen into another battle screen, like most other RPGs do. It's gonna be, it's a little harder to accomplish that feat. So, I, I get why. <laughs> it just would have been nice because then you could have at least set up your characters to be like, okay, I always want Chrono in the front. I want Marley and, and Luca in the back because they're both ranged attacks and they're both basically mages. <laughs> or at least in my playthrough, but for the most part, that's how they're handled. Anyway, this is the boss and uh, this is where I decided to plop in the term beast nest because it was gonna be too hard to put uh, <laughs> blue beast, red beast, and mud amp all in one uh, titled kind of thing. So we're fighting the enemies in the beast nest today. And uh, these guys are pretty difficult, like I said. They're, they're just a different version of those beasts, and their gimmick, if you can't figure it out, is one of them's blue, one of them's red. So you're going to use the opposite ability like this, like so. Ice on fire, and then fire on ice. And uh, that little mud imp, he's actually really annoying. Don't let the fact that he's an imp fool you. He's actually quite annoying. <laughs> I believe he can heal the, uh, he can heal his beasts here. Uh, which is not good, which is not good. We don't want them healing. I, I, I don't want that to happen. But I'm gonna try to maybe like alternate here between, you know, which one I wanna hit because I don't, I don't know which one I wanna take out first. I don't think it matters. Uh, I, I know once the beasts are gone, the imp becomes easier, I believe. So that's my strategy here, essentially. So yeah, I'm just gonna try to split the damage here a little bit, a little bit. Should have a little heal though, just in case, because they do have some hard hitting attacks. Looks like they could do an X strike on me as well, so they don't want none of that. <laughs> that's my move. Blast him with a fire sword. I think I've already messed up my rotation. <laughs> no big deal, that's fine. We just wanna kill something. Something's gotta get out of the way here. Oh, and uh, I guess this is a, a nice little time to mention, uh, since I'm watching it on my side monitor. <laughs> it's got the sound off, but uh, shout outs to uh, Low Bias Gaming for being our 60th subscriber. Thank you guys. I love that channel, and uh, I will link them in the description below. Uh, a lot of great games, a lot of great reviews, streams, live streams. Uh, just overall great guys, too. Really, really, um, really friendly. So, highly recommend Low Bias Gaming channel, all one word. Check him out on YouTube. I'll have him linked down below. Thank you guys for being numero 60. My dudes. Alright, that red one's starting to piss me off, but I'm gonna keep... I think I'm just gonna go ahead and keep trying to do this. And, and while I was talking about that, Marley died. <laughs> but so did the uh, blue beast, so that's cool. That's fine. Get him out of here. We're done there. Uh, let's... I probably should have put haste on Chrono. I don't know why I didn't do that yet. I know later on it's gonna kind of be, uh... There'll be some gear for Chrono later on, and it's gonna negate that uh, haste spell. But then it's not, neither here nor there at the moment, so... It's ice. It's ice time to finish off this uh, red beast here. Go, and actually, I probably need to go ahead and... 
throw another cure in all honesty because I don't want Chrono to die here. He's my main hitter. <laughs> Him and Marley together are going to be the ones to finish this off. Let's take a little strike hit. See, it doesn't do anything to that Mud Imp. Yeah, and he's just going to constantly keep healing. So, yeah, you don't want to worry about the Mud Imp until the beasts are gone. Look at this fucker. Sorry. I just... It makes me angry when bosses do healing or an enemy's heal. Oh, my God. I was playing... Uh, doing a test run of Breath of Fire 2 because I know I want to do that series at some point and I was fighting harpies uh, how come that didn't kill it come on all right we got to bust a protect spell here on Marley let's keep my healer alive but yeah I was playing Breath of Fire 2 and uh, harpies can heal and oh my god that was making me so mad in uh, the beginning of that game so the beginning of that game is hard the beginning of both Breath of Fire games is like way more difficult than the end <laughs> once you make it to about halfway through that those games you're uh you're pretty beefed up, you know, especially if you follow a nice guide that'll, especially in uh, Breath of Fire 1, that'll get you some excellent in-game gear, like, really early, so, pretty cool. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be LPing that one, I, uh, like I said, on the docket, I've got Earthbound coming up after this, and, uh, I'm about to run out of side LPs, so, <laughs> I'm gonna have to probably start up, uh, Final Fantasy 1 pretty soon, probably before Earthbound gets going. I don't know. I just want to keep a couple uh, handful of games. There goes the Red Beast. He's done. Um, yeah, I want to keep a couple, uh, a couple handful of games in the pocket, you know, ready to go. For when I run out of the shorter ones. So, I'm working on it. All right, let's see how Fire Sword does against the Mud Imp. Eh. It seems like he's got, like, a barrier or something on. What? I don't... Right, the Beasts are done. I don't get why this is much more difficult now. Is, he, is it maybe ice that I need to be using here? Yeah, ice did well. Ice did well. For a uh, single ice attack. That's not bad. Perhaps I need to bust out a ice sword. Ooh, chrono physical attack. Very nice. Okay. He's just gonna keep sitting down and healing himself. At least he's not healing himself for full. Again, like in Breath of Fire. That game can be a little infuriating too as well sometimes, but overall, great RPG series. One of my favorites. There's the haste. I should have been using that this whole round. But that's okay because we want Chrono to just administer the beatdown at this point. There we go. Was that a counter or was that one of my... He's just gonna keep healing. Uh, I got Marley and Luca both under protection. Chrono with the speed. Just... It's time to just go all out. Yeah, you keep healing yourself, buddy. Because I'm doling out more damage and you can heal back, so... Nice try anyway. Oh my god, it's like it's a counter move. And he just keeps healing himself. Ugh, spin cut time. Is that actually a... Tra nice damage. Is that a translation error calling it spin cut? I'm not sure because there's not really much spinning about it. And all it really does is double the damage. So <laughs> I'm guessing that's just kind of a... Uh, maybe not a mistranslation, but a... Uh, you know, just... I don't know. Maybe they got it... Maybe they got it messed up. Because <laughs> later on you get an ability called Confuse, which doesn't confuse the enemy. It just attacks them four times. Kind of much, kind of, I don't know. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Chrono's abilities are strange. There we go. Goodbye, Mud Imp. Got a lot of experience, 26 techs. Marley level up. Very nice. Oh, but if you thought that was it, you were wrong, because there is so much more today. <laughs> We're gonna climb up this chain and welcome to chapter 20, the Guru on Mount Woe. Okay, these little rubbles here are assholes. <laughs> they turn off your text, they turn off your items, so all you can do is attack. They also have a very high, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Avoidance or uh, agility rate maybe, or evasion, that's the one. They have an incredibly high evasion rate. And the way to counter that is characters who have a high strike. Which, unfortunately, I would have said Marley and Luca here, but they're missing like crazy right now. <laughs> oh, there we go. Thank you, Chrono. Seems like Chrono's handling business. All right. Very nice. Thousand experience and a hundred tech points. A hundred tech points. Now, the gimmick with that enemy is if you don't beat them in time, essentially, before they, I think they run away, then you get nothing. So... Sometimes they appear in groups of two, so incredibly awesome spot to grind, and very, very useful spot to grind. All right, it's time to bring out the beatdown team. 
Island, Robo, Chrono. Let's check our gear, make sure our gear is set. Let's um, do a little moving around here. Bust on that Lumen Robe, Rock Helm. Uh, if I never made mention of it, Isla doesn't use weapons at all, so her weapon is never going to change from Fist. Even though in the promotional artwork for this game, she had a club. You know, I thought that would have been nice. I could have included that, you know, <laughs> different clubs. But I can see where that might have gone awry a little bit just because who's going to use a club in the future? You know, why Why would you get that, you know? Or, you know, maybe it could be like Fallout. You get like a mace or like a beatdown stick. Or something. <laughs> I don't think Isla would be privy to using that, so. So it makes sense. It makes sense. But uh, it, it's it's like an automatic. It's kind of like Pooh from Earthbound, you know? You don't need a weapon, even though Pooh does have some weapons. but Or a weapon. New enemy here, Bantam Imps. And I forgot what the word Bantam meant, but I've heard that term used um, in another game. in Super Ninja Boy on the Super Nintendo. Oh, another game I'm going to play eventually, but I want to play that one with Army. Get, we'll get there. There we go. Well, uh, but they, uh, again, I'll talk about the gimmicks of enemies here. They, uh, once you hit or destroy the, the first phase, I guess, of them, the, uh, the bird dies, but they drop the imp still, so. Crimson H, Crimson Rain HP down. That's, uh, I thought that that was a drain attack, but I guess not. It's kind of a low level special thing. I don't know. Physical attacks seem to do just fine, though, so. Don't worry about that. At least we're finding some enemies again that are coming back to being, you know, just regular old fight command. <laughs> the old school fight command. All right. This place has uh, no music, as you can tell. So the only thing we're really going to get here is the soothing sounds of the wind, except for the battle music. All right, we got another rubble to take care of, and yeah, every single time they're going to do that at the beginning of the battle. It doesn't matter how fast you are, that's programmed in that this enemy is going to do that right away. So if you think you're getting it easy, uh, <laughs> you can get in there and maybe chunk a spell off. Nope. Nope, you cannot. God, and we're just going to be sitting here missing this whole time. So I was kind of hoping that bringing Isla here would make this uh, a little easier, just because when, when Isla and Chrono hit something, they hit hard. Uh, but if it runs away, at least I'll be able to show you what it does, or maybe it explodes or something, I don't know. But whatever it is, you don't get the experience and you don't get the AP. Come on, guys. There we go. That's all right. I'd rather get it. Oh, look at that. So good. Isla levels up. Isla learns Rock Throw, Dual Tech, Falcon Hit. That is for Chrono and Isla, I believe. And uh, an awesome ability. Very awesome ability. Don't let this fool you. There's a little underneath right there and we'll go grab ourselves a load helm which is an improvement item for chrono i believe i don't oh yeah we'll put that glow helm right here on uh oh everyone okay there we go i gotta i gotta start managing my uh, inventory and my equipment a little better but as i stated a few times in other episodes chrono trigger isn't really a hard game it's just uh so if you make minor mistakes like that forgetting to do that kind of stuff it's not you're not penalized really badly for doing so Nice. Two more of these imps. There we go. Let's jump up with the spin cut attack. Destroy the bird. At least they're only giving us groups of two. Uh, this would be probably a good area, actually, to uh, throw a berserk on one of my guys, um, since this is just a hard-hitting team. I know I had it last time on Robo, but in all honesty, it would actually probably make more sense to have it on Isla. But uh, it's just an accessory I tend to not use. I'd rather just have control over my characters. But it does it does amount to a bit of beefiness, you know? And especially with enemies like this that are just taking physical hits. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea to use. So on your let's play or playthrough of the game, um, this would be a, a, great, a great area to use. Um, your, what was it? I don't know what it was. Just Berserker, I think. Use your Berserker accessory. All right. Defeated, gold obtained. Very nice. I like the effect that's going on here. Uh, you know, with the, uh, I don't know what you would call that. I guess the transparency, <laughs> the overlay. It's very nice. Uh, you know, it's deciding on whether I wanted to skip some of these battles or not, but I wanted to make it clear if I actually was, was able to get the reward at the end or not. So I decided just not to skip these battles. Uh, 
They're not that long, especially when I'm hitting, but when I'm missing, they are a little dragged out. There we go. Nice. That was probably one of the better ones <laughs> that I've fought so far. Here we go. Ooh, heal beam. Nice. Now, I think that's the one I've been waiting for this whole freaking time. It heals your whole party. Robo's good like that. So that'll be quite useful in today's episode, actually. <laughs> Very useful. I didn't realize it would be this long until I got that. Uh, I suppose I could have done a little bit of grinding to get there, but... All right, we got some gargoyles to take out. Let's see what they... Uh, oh, that works nicely. <laughs> Everything here seems to be pretty weak to regular physical. God, those things die. <laughs> what a useless group of enemies. Got a nice level up for Chrono out of it. No, that's good. Oh, we got a save point. Uh, this might be one of the few times that the save point isn't right before a boss battle because this is just kind of a long freaking area. But great point to use the shelter, get all that HP and MP and back up and take a save. There we go. Um, what was I... I was making mention of the last episode and, and uh, me missing a few things, so... Um, like I said, there are some spots I think I'm gonna go back to, but, you know, I'm not... I'm not 100%ing the game. Nor that I ever say I would, so <laughs> I'm just gonna, like I said, very casual, very casual, let's play. I'll take out this guy first since he's so easy to die. Wow, I didn't even critical that time. They must just have shit for, imp or for HP, I guess. <laughs> nice, there we go. That'll definitely get rid of the bird. Uh, let's see, yes, there's a little robo punch. <laughs> Falcon punch, which was enough to get rid of the bird. Stone imps. I didn't realize it changed their names. Um, maybe the Bantam is the bird? I don't know. Oh, that's what I was talking about earlier, too, is that name. I heard it in um, Super Ninja Boy. It has some gears, some Bantam gears. So I'm imagining it had something to do with ninjas, <laughs> which is cool. Ninjas is cool. Right, let's run across the chain over here. Oh, boy, yes, another rubble. Guarding two treasure chests. Immediate lock all, of course. I wonder uh, if there is a way in the back programming. If one were to turn that off, let's say, uh, if they have any magical weaknesses. I'd be, uh, be interested, interested to see uh, what they would be weak to. Or if it would work. I mean, because I don't think magic can miss. I don't think magic's ever missed. So if it has, I've... I think there's other games where it can, but... Punch in the face. There we go. We're getting them all. That's that's good. That's what we want to do. We want to hit them all. <laughs> Isla learns charm and dual tech boogie, which I believe is between her and Robo. Got a load vest. Got a shield. Shields do the same thing that uh, Luca's protect spell does. Oh, there we go. We'll throw that load vest on who? On who do I want it on Robo? Who do I want this on? Yes. Give that to Robo keep that white mail just because I like that uh I don't know it 100% if there's any enemies here they're gonna be throwing out lightning attacks but essentially what that does for Chrono is makes them absorb lightning attacks which is awesome for a character like Chrono who <laughs> cast magical lightning attacks so go let's get this chest up here but not without earning it first and take care of two of these again Ooh, nice with the critical that should take care of the bird absolutely uh, charm spell. That's what I want to talk about. Charm spell for Isla is essentially a steal. And, um, it's not that accurate, but it's more accurate than someone like Locke from Final Fantasy VI. Because that was incredibly so inaccurate, I lose my mind on that game with his steal ability. I I've started to believe that he is a treasure hunter and not a freaking thief because he's so bad at it. However, there is a similarity between both of those characters. Um, as, there as in an item that kind of improves the rate at which the steal happens. Now, it, her natural charm ability is much better than, than someone like Locke in, in Final Fantasy VI, but uh, yeah, it, they operate very similar. And we're getting into a battle here. Oh boy, a group of four of these, or at least they're starting to realize that we can <laughs> kick their asses pretty quickly. <laughs> Go. They're gonna be done in one hit. Can you do it too, Robo? No, Robo just a little under. They must have 250 hit points. I think everyone else is hitting over 250. So that's probably why. <laughs> I don't think they give them a random number like that. 
that. That'll do it. Excellent. Now, I'm going to mention here that, yes, I know that I'm not getting that treasure chest. I believe I had a few drinks when I was playing through this episode. <laughs> and uh, didn't even realize that I had forgotten. I was going right for it until I got attacked and then just, you know, overlooked it completely. Uh, I'm not sure what was in that box. <laughs> I don't know if it was anything too incredibly important. I certainly hope it wasn't. Uh, I think I've got most of the important stuff, like the load vests here already, so... No big deal, probably. <laughs> hey, anyway, look, so we got a nice little chance to use Slash. Not that it did a whole lot of damage, but... You know, enough to kind of weaken those guys there on the line a little bit. That'll finish off the gargoyle. Like how he just summons a rock from the ground to chuck it. <laughs> Maybe a little cyclone? How about that? It'll see some early skills on your ass. That'll do it. Should've used that in the first place instead of slash. Maybe they have a strength uh, to, uh, to that wind elemental that's kind of behind the scenes on that attack. <laughs> Maybe so. And let's continue around, see if there's any more chests we haven't gotten yet. Or for me to miss. <laughs> Yeah, I probably could have done some battle skipping in this episode in all honesty. I, it, it would have definitely cut down on the time because we're, we're getting close to the uh, to the timestamp where I'm usually wrapping up an episode or at least about to get close to. But nope, not today. We're going to go a little longer and just wipe out Mount Well because I believe this is one of those areas that once we're done, that's it. Uh, you don't come back to it. And let me tell you, when you're editing the way I do, <laughs> that's a real pain in the ass. <laughs> Uh, having to make sure that you collect your background images uh, from the source material uh, either before you play or after you save. You know, multiple saves could be a really good thing uh, if you're wondering about the editing process and that. So, because yeah, there's a couple been, been a couple areas where you know you're just not able to get back to. That's it. You know, you're done for whatever reason or another. So just keep that in mind. You know, if you're a budding let's player like myself. To, uh, oh god, save often and, and multiple times. If you edit right away, kind of like how I do an episode and then you edit and then an episode and then you edit, uh, essentially it only takes two save files, which most RPGs uh, allow that. So. And if not, there's always the emulator goodness, so nothing wrong with that in my eyes. Until the companies give you something better or a better option, I don't give a damn. And then we do have another box over there to the right, guarded by four more gargoyles. <laughs> and maybe I'll have to remember to uh, use one of Robo's techs to take him out in one hit, since I don't think he can do it in one hit. Yep, let's see. We'll go with the tackle. Slam him, dude. Boom. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. These guys are just really, really, really weak. Really weak. <laughs> But I'm telling you, they just this area is just handing out the experience points. All right, we got another rubble. Nice. Maybe this will be the one that gets away, or not. <laughs> Miss. Uh, this isn't the only enemy that will do this kind of attack either. Uh, this very annoying lock all attack, except for fight, except for the attack man. That's rare. We don't see it very often, but. Uh, it is, it is going to make a resurgence later on, and uh, pretty soon probably, I imagine. probably in the next episode. It's kind of a newer thing we haven't really seen much of as far as um, mechanics go in this game. Which, uh, you know, it's really great that uh, Chrono Trigger is really good about that, uh, giving you different... Alright, we got it! We got it! <laughs> so far all of them, collecting all them points! Ooh, Chrono Learns Confused, very nice, Isla levels up as well. But yeah, uh, the game is very awesome about giving you different mechanics at different points in the game that are going to make it a bit more challenging rather than just loading up an enemy. We've got a barrier right there, by the way. Uh, besides just loading up enemies like full of hit points or something like that. Uh, you know, which can kind of get a little grindy. You know, so like in, um, in the ROM hack, I'll bring that up again, in uh, Flames of Eternity, another thing that kind of just gets my goat a little bit is that and I know that it's made to be a more difficult version of this game. 
Can I skip them entirely? I'm gonna skip them entirely. <laughs> um, but yeah, just giving enemies HP for the sake of giving them more HP to lengthen out the battle uh, is a little, 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 little lazy to me. I think it makes more sense for enemies to have, you know, like some kind of crucial attack that's gonna force you to start switching up your strategy, you know, it's like, well, instead of taking an attack round, maybe your fastest character has to take an item round, you know, or something like that. Breath of Fire 2 is a good example of that, uh, as opposed to its predecessor, Breath of Fire 1, which did exactly what I was complaining about. <laughs> uh, looks like we gotta fight these things anyway. I don't think they're gonna let us through the chain without, alright. But yeah, Breath of Fire 1 is a big perpetrator of that, of just giving enemies, like, boatloads of HP, so you can sit there and just hack away with not much to it, you know? <laughs> but that does change later on in the second half, sort of, once you're a little bit more powerful and you've got, actually no, it really doesn't. <laughs> Brother Fire 2 changes it up and makes that a little bit more manageable. However, those problems do not exist in Chrono Trigger. Uh, and nor uh, Mystic Quest, my other LP that I'm going through right now, not really in that game either, to be honest. Boy, I've really been talking about a lot of other games today. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's just, uh, going through the catalog of my brain. <laughs> All games that I want to play, though. There's gonna, uh... It's gonna be so much fun. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a bittersweet day, though, once, uh, Chrono Trigger is over. Uh, just because I love this game so much. I really do, and... That's okay, I'm gonna have more Chrono Trigger goodness, though. As I said, I'll probably do a shorter clip version of a new game plus. It essentially just goes through the highlights of stuff that I might have missed. Or, uh... Or just different paths through through the same storyline that we've already been through and stuff like that. But I'll that'll be a lot more of the battle skipping side, uh, probably skipping, you know, a lot of, I'll call it fast travel, you know, skipping portions entirely since if you wanted to see any of that, you can come watch this Let's Play. It's all good. No problem there. And then, of course, you know, once a, um, I think I'm going to wait for a, for a pretty stable version of Flames of Eternity. Uh, and I know they're still working on that game to come out before I decide to because I, I I take issue with a couple other things in that too as well I'm not a big fan of the music that they changed and I'm also not a big fan of the character portraits that they changed um, from Akira Toriyama's art to I guess, I'm, I'm assuming their art it's not that their art is bad and I'm, I'm not knocking on that at all it's just my personal preference is more or less I, I prefer to stick with the original tunes and the original um, character frames just just me uh, but I do like what they did with Frog, but I'm not going to give that away. Uh, we'll save that for the time, when the time comes. <laughs> if the time comes. Oh, this might be the rubble that gives us, gives us the crap. Okay, there we go. Nice, Chrono. Come on. Come on, Isla. I really don't want this thing running away on me. Please stop missing. <laughs> for the love of God, stop missing. Uh, I don't think I've even tried out Charm yet. Uh, I believe I'm going to try it out on the boss of this area, though, so... It does have its uses. Oh my god, this might be the one. Just go. Just go, man. Nope. All right. Getting all the rubbles. Yeah, you definitely want to get all the rubbles. Chrono levels up. Uzi punch for a du another dual tech I missed. Oh my god. Every It's almost like every time you fight one of those, you're going to level up. If you really wanted to, uh, before you like, leave this area, like go out, come back in, and start it all over. Start the process all over if you really wanted to. Uh, because this is an excellent, excellent. It's AP Heaven. Oh my god. <laughs> AP Heaven. And here we go with another dual, a new dual tech we haven't used yet. <laughs> oh, that, that rocks. It's another one of those hit them on a line attacks, but this one uh, is like, I think the range is much wider and uh, hits a whole lot more of them. I think that, oh yeah, there we go. Our favorite status ailment, chaos. You know what? I am going to. Uh, do I want to hit them all? Do I want to tackle? I think I'm going to tackle. I don't want to use that Uzi punch. That's kind of just overkill, I think. I think this will do it. It did it. Okay. Yeah. That's probably one of the few times you'll see me use MP management. <laughs> For once. And I think Isla just hit Kano. That's not nice. Why would you do that? Oh, it can heal itself. That sucks. Well, you know what you can't heal from? It's a sword to the back of the face. 
right. They're doling out the money in two, man. I'm getting serious amounts of cash. Got another shield, something I'll probably never use, and a shelter. Always useful. Yeah, those shield items, I'm not, uh... <clears throat> yeah, Luca has protect, so... And I don't know, I don't really find myself at a moment when I've needed to use that either, like... This is kind of, a. Uh, I guess, if, you know, in the instance where you don't have Luca, I can see its use, but... Not against trash enemies, not against trash mobs like this, you know, it's not... Alright, Robo has strengthened up enough to, uh, destroy Gargoyles in one hit. In one episode. That's awesome. And here's our second save point in the area. Yeah, this has been a very long area. They've, uh, they haven't been... They've been throwing pretty much everything they can at us now. So yeah, we'll take that save, take that shelter. Because shit is about to get real pretty soon. This is, I think, the last area. Second to last area. Second to last area, yeah. Ooh, we got a time hack. Nice. That is an upgrade. Let's give that to Chrono. Prevent stop and slow. Excellent. Oh, and uh, I'll pass on the good gear down to Isla. There we go. She's got a load helm now. So yeah, Chrono can no longer be affected by... Uh... Oh, that's great that it would be a time hat, though. Ooh, she's already got the charm top on, doesn't she? Okay, that was the item I was talking about that can increase the power of charm. But I'm going to take that off, strengthen her up, because we're going to need all the power we can get. And I don't think I really care to have the boost in charming. I think I can just pull it off anyway. Got a full ether there. That's always good. And we got a magic tab. Very nice. Music glitch. <laughs> Who do I want to give the magic tab to? Because I don't have a regular party here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it until I get my party. Or, you know, forget about it. <laughs> oh. It's getting ominous. It's going down. What is this? giant cube of ice. This big cage? What's happening? It disappeared? Oh, shit. You're big. <laughs> Step up to the pedestal, Chrono, because it's boss time. Giga Gaia. Uh, this boss does not mess around. He's got AoE attacks that hurt, as you can see. He's got two-handed attacks that will, s that will cast this this plasma beam that sounds like a vacuum that also hurts. And, um, yeah, it seems like right off the bat he got two attacks as well. So that's not good. Okay, so I'm going to target the hands here first. And I know that this uh, technique works very well against that. So we want to knock his hands out so he, can't, he does not have the use of them anymore. And, yes, we'll put to use the mighty heal beam. That heals everyone, and I, I believe this to be a much better heal than frogs. Uh, it almost did 200 healing points to us, whereas opposed to frogs, which I think does maybe like, like a quarter less of that or something. Uh, I just don't find frog to be the most efficient healer when you can have a robo do that. So, there you go. Once you've gotten it, it's awesome. And, whoa, oh shit, did he just, did I just steal? I forgot. Ah, I was waiting for that. And here I am looking at my stats and stuff. The hands can revive the head for 250 freaking hit points. Uh, it's another good time to go ahead and cure up because he's going to keep doing AoE attacks. We definitely want Chrono and Isla to continue hitting both hands at once before he can get off. Oh god, every time though. Yeah, he's going to get off two attacks essentially every time. It's really annoying. Hop on, Chrono. Let's do this. Shoop. Very nice damage, very nice. God, they're still not done yet. Robo is going to be our main healer of this battle, <laughs> of course. An excellent job you're doing there, buddy, although Chrono looks like he could use a little extra. Actually, everybody could, since we're all in the 500s. We really leveled up pretty good this episode. Okay, don't do it again, don't do it again. I've, I've just got to take out those hands. That's the priority right here, because once that's done, he can't do it anymore. This should do it. Alright. Now look at you. <laughs> now look at you. Ooh, I might have to do a, a little item healing as well because Chrono is a bit lower than I'd like him to be and that's not going to be enough to do it. Or maybe I'll just keep it up with the uh, little Volt Bite. Let's try that out. Let's attack the head now. This is what we want to do. <laughs> Zap Isla with some lightning power. 
Oh, nice! Yeah, that did good. That did really good. Yeah, we'll just keep it up with, uh, with Robo since <laughs> the Giga Guy no longer has arms <laughs> to fight with. So that'll give me a good opportunity here, uh, because I believe he revives his arms. I believe the arms come back. But, uh, that's okay, we're just gonna keep this cycle up. Deal out the damage with some Volt Bites to the face, and once the hands come back, we will, uh, what was it, Falcon hit? We'll Falcon hit him again. Beast Toss, let's try that out. It's kind of a new one. I don't think we've seen that one yet. And it missed? It missed! I guess because there's nothing for- oh, okay. I was gonna say, uh, perhaps it's because you're supposed to pick it up, but I don't think- I don't think Isla can remove its head, otherwise this battle would be over. This would be completely over. Yeah, Volt Bite seems to be doing just fine, so I'm gonna keep up with that. And uh, as you can see, he cannot attack while no arms are present, or at least he's choosing not to. Maybe it's just taking a little time to revive the arms. Commencing arm restoration, there we go, that's what it is. And do I want, what do I want? Oh, that beast toss obviously doesn't work. You wanna try a little spin kick or a boogie? We're gonna do a little spin kick. Ooh! Eh, not as good as Chrono and Isla, but decent nonetheless. And that rumble indicates the arms are back. <laughs> Look at this Rayman looking motherfucker right here. <laughs> With no arms, just hands. <laughs> Disconnected from your body. All right, commence destruction of the hands. Because here he goes again. And he's probably gonna go ahead and get off that vacuum attack again as well. Two-hand attack, dark plasma, shadow-based damage. So this would have been a good one to have maybe the blackmail attached because that would have least. Uh, if I have that, is that the one I got? I don't know. Maybe that might have been the one I missed. Uh, or a black vest, just to uh, negate out that shadow. Which kind of makes Robo's attacks not really do so well uh, if they are of the elemental nature. Uh, however, the ones that are of the physical attack nature uh, won't matter, because that elemental shadow is not in that attack. There we go, arms are down again. It feels like that went a little quicker this time. Uh, all right, so that means it's time for another Volt Bite. We're knocking him down pretty good. We're getting there. Just keep it up. That's been like 3,000, 4,000 something damage on his face already. <laughs> yep, Robo on the heels constantly. And uh, it looks like we're doing okay. Isla's a little low on MP. Uh, just because it takes more, it seems like it's less for Chrono to zap her than it is for her to use the attack to actually hit. <laughs> Which, uh, you'll notice that on, on certain characters' dual attacks, like, some of them are gonna be spending a few more points than... than the other character is. Uh, and I think that's just based on which one is more difficult to... I don't know. Just kinda, like, inside, you know, very meta about it. I, I don't know what I'm getting at here, but... <laughs> that's okay. If you get a little low, we've got plenty of items that will take care of that. Uh, alternatively, you could've had Marley here in this fight. Instead of, instead, well, see, if, if you didn't have Robo, then you would have had single targeting heals, which would have been a little bit more difficult to manage, and that's why I brought Robo along. Uh, but if you switched out Isla for Marley, you would have access to, oh, there he goes, he's done. <laughs> you would have had access to the haste spell, which would have made things a little bit easier for us, but that's okay, Giga Gaia is done. What are we rewarded with for defeating him? 3,000 experience points, 30 tech points. 3,000 gold, and Isla catches a level up. Robo catches a level up. Sorry, Chrono, not this time, buddy. But that's okay. You're still pretty tough. All right, now where's that ice sculpture? <laughs> there it is. All right. And the ice is turning white. It is... Melted, I guess, and it's Melchior? Indeed, I am Melchior. Have we met before? More importantly, can you tell me anything about the Ocean Palace? See, the Queen has degenerated to that degree. The more energy the Mammoth Machine absorbs, the further the Queen degenerates. Her spirit has been stolen by the infamous immortal Lavis. And we must flee! <laughs> 
The seal has been broken. The mountain will collapse. Elder, the mountain of woe is about to crumble. Mommy, the mountain's gonna fall. Well, get out of there. You guys are really close to it. How the hell did we get out of there so fast is what I want to know. And that is it for the Mountain of Woe. As I stated before, never able to get back there again. That place is done. So if you wanted to grind, that was your spot to do it. So they're bringing the Mammon Machine down to the Ocean Palace because the closer it is to the core of the planet, the closer it is to Labus, where Labus is, essentially. He's burrowed deep underground. Oh, and Shala's here. Shala's arrived. Where has Shala been this whole time? I thought she was summoned to the Ocean Palace. Is she taking a break? <laughs> Miss Shala, why have you come to such a miserable place? Stop degrading yourselves. We enlightened ones were once the same as you. The only difference is that we are under Lavis's control. Well, at least you know it. Janice, it's, what a filthy hovel. <laughs> Melchior, after the Mountain of Woe fell, I thought I would find you here. Is it safe for you to leave the palace? Oh, he was talking to Shala. That no longer matters. The Ocean Palace is now operational. Then all is lost. But without me, the Man and Machine won't work. I have turned my back on that evil device. I've kept the skyway open. Hurry, you must stop my mother. All right. Why don't we keep it right there? <laughs> it's a boy Dalton. He's back. Tisk tisk, my dear. Your presence is required elsewhere. Dalton, leave her alone. <laughs> the geezer speaks. Silence, old man. <laughs> Smack, wow. Dalton is a dick. <laughs> You'll come to the Ocean Palace with me. Shala! Smack. Well, the Queen's children all seem to have a problem with authority, don't they? Can you do that to royalty? Stay back. The life of this woman means nothing to me. Oh, man. Dude, Dalton is a dick. <laughs> he is a big dick. Yeah, uh, can, you, can you do that to royalty? Because essentially they are royalty, aren't they? Wow. All right, so at least he didn't hurt us this time. Got Melkier pretty good, but we must save Shala or else. Impossible, even though it's coming from you, Melkior. If the queen has allowed us to fulfill is allowed to fulfill her scheme, we are all doomed. Not on why watch, motherfucker. <laughs> I am Chrono. You're willing to challenge the queen? You're damn right I am. Cue the heroic music. That's right. Gramps use redstone. Help Chrono. Now Isla, help you. What are you guys talking about? Yeah, we, this is a different Melchior, essentially. This is not the one from our time period. <laughs> so, uh, there's kind of two Melchiors right now this time. Oh, and we got this uh, blade here. We got one ruby knife. Uh, technically, that is not an equipable item. It, uh, it is just a key item. That's how it's treated. Shala's been abducted, but without sorcery, we can't do anything. You've done so much for us, and I don't even know your names. Well, that's okay. <laughs> you will. I think. I don't know. We've altered time now, so... Two Melchiors are existing in different time periods. Because I think this Melchior here was supposed to... We, he didn't... I don't know. I don't know when that happens, exactly. Maybe that happens uh, during Ocean Palace. So... That's right, we're, uh, we're back in Al Getty and we will take another rest break here at the free inn, which is awesome. Get everyone back to 100% just in case. I don't know if it auto healed us after. Sometimes you'll get an auto heal of just certain areas. All right, time for a party switch. Let's bring the OGs back for the story. Uh, I don't think I'll need to worry about switching any of the gear just yet on them. Uh, I believe later on there'll be another area or opportunity for us to upgrade so I'm gonna kind of wait for that a little bit but uh, let's see what we got here just in case they might need a little something extra there's a comet arrow and a mega blast a megaton arm oh man a bunch of upgrades I got a bunch of upgrades actually to go through oh, man. okay which one's gonna take priority here uh, I think the weapons I know uh, I know Chrono got his upgrade 
Uh, okay, we'll get one for Robo. I can afford... Oh, God, I can't even afford another one. Yeah, that Megaton arm really cleaned me out, actually. <laughs> Perhaps I could... I'll go ahead and equip the Megaton arm, and then I'll sell off. Uh, but we'll do that later. I'm not too worried about all that right now. Like I said, the, the, I don't... I'm not, I'm not too concerned too much with upgrading Luca and Marley's weapons all, all the time because they're really not going to ever hit that hard. I really need more uh, magical abilities or any kind of magical accessories, relics type things uh, for those two characters just because it makes more sense uh, to put on them. Alright, so the Skyway is open. Uh, Shala left that open for us. Thank you very much, Shala. So we'll leave our Epoch down here on the surface while we make our way back up to Zeal. To stop the queen. So our next destination is definitely uh, Zeal Palace. Hopefully they haven't made their way down to Ocean Palace yet. But if they have, we will find our way down there. I'm certain about that in the next episode. Thank you for watching the Rooster Retro Show. My name is Roo. And we will see you on the next episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell notification icon to be reminded of future uploads. See you next time.